Okay, so change management. Uh, I'm going to show you three different kinds of change management. Um, let's talk about the pain points. Paul did a really good job talking about this earlier in his presentation. But basically, a lot of people have slow change management processes. They have a lot of manual work. And change management can also be risky and loaded with lots of bureaucracy. Um, I think it's telling that, um, that, uh, that CAB changed from change advisory board to change approval board somewhere along the way in the culture. Um, and I know that Atlassian's approach, and I really, really like this, is that um, uh, individual teams should manage their own services and the changes related to their own services. So with the flexibility of these tools and all that you know, centralized service management that I showed you, I, I should, I, sorry, I should say decentralized service management. Um, the idea is that we're setting up services managed by the teams that manage the services. And so, so they're the ones that are, that are going to handle change management. And they're the ones that can set up automation for, for, um, for the process of logging those changes. So the solution for all this is to automate risk, uh, 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 automate risk assessment with automation for JIRA and services together. Um, Paul showed you a screenshot of that. I'm going to show it to you live in the tool in a minute. You can also automate change requests by, by connecting JSM to your repo. We're going to show you that. And you, you also saw a little bit of that in the last demo. We're going to automate approvals of low risk changes. So we're just going to log them for the sake of logging them. We can always come back and check it uh, as, as, part of, as part of a postmortem, but we're letting low risk changes through automatically. We're going to track and gate deployments via our CI CD pipeline to make those deployments visible in your change management tool. And we're also going to collaborate on changes using change calendars. That's a huge request that many people have had. I'm going to show you two different ways to do those in, uh, in, in the tool as well. So the first of these three mini change management demos are basic, really simple change management. Um, I've got an application. I'm going to come in manually, and I'm just going to request a change. Um, this is super simple. So I'm going to request a change on, let's see. I have a lot of these demos built up, so I want to make sure that I'm doing a uh, basic one. And it looks like it doesn't even really matter uh, which one of these that I'm going to do. So I'm going to say, uh, fix the thing. Great. Oops. And sorry, you saw that that, uh, that knowledge base article was really, really quickly picked up, which is nice. Um, fix the thing. Big plan attached. Um, and I can come in here and I can say which services this, this change affects. What's kind of neat is uh, uh, if I do the website service, we'll actually see, depending on the version of Jira that's, that's, that's happening right now in cloud, um, you, you're going to see connected incidents uh, uh, to that service as well. It may not be rolled out yet in our version, but um, I can choose change type. I'm going to do a, a, a standard change. I can choose change impact, uh, urgency, change risk. Again, all of these you know, really important things to help us triage this. But this is all, this is all pretty, pretty manual stuff. Um, I can add my implementation plan, a backup plan, a test plan, plan start date, again, everything that we possibly need. So that's, that's, uh, that's pretty manual. But that is how I would submit a basic change without using a connected CI CD pipeline. Uh, let's take a look at, at um, how to track those changes. So I've got a change calendar here. This is, this is again, back on the agent side of the world. And um, as Connor was saying with Finish Line, you don't have to have all of your teams in the same project. We can turn, we could have just a change project um, if, if you wanted to, and then, and then separate incidents into a different project. But in, um, in the project that's managing change, I've got this change calendar uh, option living over here. And you can see uh, all of my active changes for, for this month and, and if those are going to conflict with, with any other changes. I know Atlassian is making a lot of updates to this tool. So um, I'm going to show you a change calendar that I made before Atlassian added this in there that I still like to use. And that is a, a change calendar in Confluence that I can also bring in other things like holidays, uh, freeze windows, and, and um, uh, other, other system maintenance events. You could, of course, do this back in the, in the native change calendar using other tickets. And I believe I heard on a call that we're going to add support coming up to support those other kinds of things to make sure that we really aren't conflicting. But we've got, we've got a nice change management thing going on here. Um, yeah, and then we also have um, uh, uh, Confluence also supports change by having templates for, for, um, for a change plan. 
in this situation, I've got adding adding gift cards to the website, and I've got all of my change details. And again, the power of Confluence and Jira, I can connect my change requests and my related issues back over into Jira. I can add service owners. They are getting notified when I when I make this um, uh, when I make this change plan. I've got all my plans down here, including pre-install, install, and post-install. I've got all my tasks logged over here. I've got my communications and my post-implementation review. And this is all just information that I filled in in a native um, Confluence change template. So lots, lots to support change management. All right, so let's look at automating a standard change with outdated deployments. So I'm gonna show you how automation can speed up your change management process. And we're gonna do this by coming to this story over in Jira. This is what my developer is working on in our, in our payroll system. They wanna add Euro to my payroll currency. Uh, payroll system is a tier three service. And so not, you know, it's important, but it's not major. Uh, I'm gonna to switch to my payroll repo right now, which is here in Bitbucket. And I'm gonna make a change to some code. Uh, Actually, I'm just going to update a readme file, but you get the idea. Um, we're making, making code changes here and committing them. And I'm going to commit this. And as I commit it, I'm going to make sure that I grab my SSP26 uh, issue key, because that is going to relate my commit back to JIRA. And something that happens automatically here is I've got I've got pipelines running in the background that are that are doing doing deployments uh, automatically, which you know another great thing about Bitbucket pipelines. Uh, if I come back to my ticket and if I refresh, we're going to see that uh, that I've got related deployment information uh, over here. I've got I've got one commit over from Bitbucket. I've got that context here as well. And now I'm going to switch to my service desk and show you that uh, uh, here in, in closed changes, as soon as that pipeline finishes running, uh, and this does take a moment, this is the only, this is the real challenge of doing live demos, I have to tell you. But basically, there are, they, there are a couple of automations running in the background that are scanning my connected repo and it's going to uh, it's going to automatically create and close a standard change request because because I just I just made a commitment on a tier three service which is considered a minor service not high risk in, in my environment um, and oh gosh come on load I want to show you the ticket that I made well anyway let me show you a different one um, this is the same kind of example and that one's still happening because the pipeline is 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 delayed. Oops, not that one. We're going to show you payroll. Here we go. So what's happening automation-wise is that it is automatically setting the change type to standard. It's automatically setting the risk to low, and then you can even see um, all the rule executions over here for that. So when a change manager request is created, update update change type. When a deployment is is done, then go ahead and transition that to done if it's a standard change. So my developer just created a change request and closed it all by simply committing code to a minor system without a lot of effort. Uh, that's huge, I think, for, for most people's change management process. It, it really removes developer friction. It also supports compliance. I think everybody's pretty happy with that, with that scenario. Um, all right, so let me show you one other, uh, one other example. Uh, I'm going to show you in my in my mobile app repo. Here I am. This is a tier one service now, and this is a much more uh, 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 important service for us. So if I edit the README this time, basically I'm doing another commit, but this time to a much more important service. SSP. Um, while this pipeline is running, because it takes a little, uh, uh, just a little bit of time, uh, this pipeline is then going to kick off in Jira another another type of change request. But this time, the change request is going to be stopped because this is a tier one service, and I'm going to have to approve that change request. But while that's spinning in the background, I, I want to show you the services that we talked about. Those exist over here in Insight, 
and I've got my services catalog here lined up ready to go. You can see all of the major services. We can see the, the uh, uh, tiers that they're running. If I come, let's say, to the mobile app, uh, whose, whose code repo I'm working on right now, we can see their, their service relationships. And actually, if I hop back over into Jira Service Desk, uh, I can see the same services over here if I'm not looking at Insight. So I've, I've, got my, I've got my mobile app service here, and then I can also see the projects that support it. I can see the repo that supports it here. I can again see, see the different tiers. A lot going on in the background here to connect all of this together. One, one quick note on the services part in Insight, they are working on extensibility right now. Um, so this this is where it will surface up into the JSM, but Insight is the you know where we'll connect it with the different data that is, supports the infrastructure. And so the extensibility is coming to where if you want your attributes, the last thing we'll provide some out of the box that you'll be allowed to manage, and then you will be able to extend around that with the attributes that matter to you. So you heard it here first, folks. Hot takes from Paul Buckington. I love it. Um, also, the, the, I just heard that the phrase hot take is apparently said by the kids now. Um, all right, so uh, my pipeline show is my rage. commit that I am uh, showing Hey, look at that. My pipeline got delayed. Why was it delayed? Oh, yeah, because I, I've got deployment gating turned on over in, uh, over in my services. So. So here, I actually have to come to the to the change ticket that was that, that was automatically generated, and um, and solve that solve that change ticket. So let me refresh. And, oop, there we go. Deployment five, uh, uh, XCOM demo mobile app. So what is what has happened in the background? Automation for Jira went and saw that I had a gated deployment. Uh, from a tier one service, it knew that this was a critical risk, so it automatically set my change risk. Uh, because it's a tier one service, it not, it, it's, it's a change type to normal instead of standard. I've got my mobile app service context here. Uh, we can see all the automations that ran down here. And uh, this service has a number of, of approvers that were automatically added to the ticket. Uh, each of these approvers, they can come in. I'm an approver. I'm going to go ahead and approve this change. Fantastic. And then I'm going to go ahead and move this to, to implementing. And now if I switch back to Bitbucket, I hope you're still tracking with me, uh, you can see that now my deployment has, has resumed and is now in progress to be completed momentarily. That is a lot of custom automation that in the real world would be built by the team that is managing that service. So, so we've got this wonderful decentralized service management thing going on. Uh, uh, the appropriate approvers, the appropriate code repos, the, appro the appropriate ops teams are all connected to these individual services. Um, that is a lot. I hope that you are both duly impressed and also <laughs> very excited to roll this out in your own environment.